Uh, so I would like to tell you something about what we do in uh, Avast Antivirus to detect the latest threats. And I'll focus on uh, Windows malware, Windows binaries, because it's still at the core of what we do. OK, so back then, when most of the uh, real viruses was, were, were found and, and uh, recognized, the uh, term a computer virus was coined by an analogy, because the real virus works in a way that it injects its own genetic instructions into a cell, a host cell, that it needs for reproduction. And it usually kills or damages the host cell during this process. And there was something very similar to this. When this box now is an executable file, and the virus in the original sense injects its code inside the file, usually uh, used to damage the file. But nowadays, we've got malware. And malware is something a bit different. It's usually a standalone executable. It's trying to uh, take over the machine or steal the user's data. And we can use another analogy to explain you what are the, the current problems for us. Because, well, how do you recognize a thief? You can have a thief that's like prophylic. Or you can have a thief like this guy from Home Alone that's kind of dumb. Or you can have a thief from Wall Street that's kind of pretty smart. And well, first you say, it's easy. Those people steal things. But then if you like, try to follow the behavior closely, there is not much resemblance in between of those people. So what you need is a judge to decide where, where they cross the line, where they do something they shouldn't be doing. And uh, for an AV, AV industry, this judge is the malware analyst. Still, there has to be someone who, who decides. But here we got one more layer in, in the malware in, in our industry, because the thieves that you've seen in the pictures are rather malware families, not the malware files. And each of these, each of these families can have many members that are created by just slightly modifying uh, the files or adding envelope, envelope layers on, on top of the original files. And it produces myriads of files. We got like 300,000 such files every day. And that's just too much work for our analysts to judge it manually if it's like doing the right thing. So here I present you the solution right ahead, and then we all go through how we get to this. You want to do something in a way that you get the query, the new file that you're supposed to, to decide if it's good or bad. And you look around in all the samples that you already know and, and decide it to be evil or, or not evil. And if you find that this guy goes to the very vicinity of, of uh, the bad ones, well, that, that's a hint. Probably this guy is bad as well. Or actually, it, it works pretty well. It's what we tested. And to do this, you need to find the similar files. And to find similar objects in this kind of machine learning setting, you usually do two things. Like you select the representation of the object, and then you need a distance function that tells you how similar or how unsimilar those two things are. So for the file vector, we create a, a fixed size feature vector that's uh, extracted from the, from the P format. We try to stay as, as close to the original format as, as possible. So several fields in there are just 
the values of various structures, and there are some more dynamic features, but we, we keep it secret. And there is like one thing I like to point out, because uh, the format is pretty complex, and we wanted to be sure that even for the, the damaged files and the, the corner cases, we get a, the same results. So we want some lengths to, to keep the code in just single copy. There's no duplication. Everyone who needs to extract the, the things uses the C, C code that, that we got. And then we got the distance function. And this distance function was uh, basically handcrafted to, to fit our feature vector. And we designed a special distance operator for each of those features to uh, play with well with the semantics of the field. Uh, here you got some, some examples like um, we get the equality, we get log transforms, we got order transforms, and then we, we scaled, scaled the values to contribute kind of equally to the distance. Now for the data that, that, that we've got, here you got something like a map of our files. This is a sample of about one million files, and the green ones are the good ones, the red ones are the bad ones, and the color blind among a few have to believe that the bottom is red. And you see in the data that first, they actually separate quite nicely, and they form kind of clusters quite often. So this is the, the property of, of the space that, that we use for this easy, easy classification. Uh, the count or the size of the data set is like 60 million points that we use, and most of it is, is clean because the malware evolves much, much faster than, than the clean stuff, so it doesn't make much sense to keep the old old things in the uh, uh, data set. So our first implementation was GPO-based. It was uh, the, the, because it's like analytical processing, so it was a column-oriented database. So this diagram shows like you get a record, and you collect all the same features and put it into one block of memory. And due to this high throughput, high memory throughput of GPUs and, and Massive parallelism, we are able to, to implement the features just quite naively, no special optimizations. But when your data grows, you have to start adding the GPUs, and when you're out of the server slots, you have to add more servers, and it, it's getting more and more tedious. But still, uh, you got the neighbors now, and you want the machine to do the classification for you as well. So we had some design requirements, like first we wanted to be able to find easily what caused the mistake, because there is some, there is some uh, process when the users do not like our classification, there is a false positive report, and we have to be able to react very quickly. So uh, this was the first requirement, and well, it's like a combination, like, okay, you need to find the culprit, I mean, we need to fix it. So what we ended up with was an instance-based classifier, and we actually took just, just the closest points from the good and the bad sides. So what you get is this pretty nice decision space, a plane where you can just draw a polygon and say, this is the evil. And it actually works pretty well, partially because of the, the, the data, data shape that you've seen on the map. And then using the system for like two years, we decided that it's, it's time to do some optimizations. So here you can see where you can get if, if you invest into optimizations. So instead of the, this uh, flat list search, we use the VP tree. Then we use this, uh, because we are already sure that this classification makes sense. So we use the properties of the polygon to, to uh, do a bounded search. We 
are not searching for the closest, nearest neighbors, but for some neighbors that are close enough. And I, uh, we additionally optimize the, the distance function in assembly. And we get something that's like 100 times faster than, than the GPU version. So this is the VP3 kind of an art. And now I get to the deployment of the whole thing. So our users run the files. And the first thing the, the endpoint asks the cloud how much users in the world have seen this file. And if it's just a few, I won't tell you the exact numbers, but if it's low enough, we investigate that file very thoroughly. And this is where it gets. The, the original system was called Medusa. And first, only, only this link was there. So there was kind of a slower, slower turnover here, but getting this, this super fast CPU version, we actually added this link where the users can actually query the, the system online. So we get much, much better protection for the user base. And then the antivirus Always, it's about generating some some uh, kind of definitions, virus definitions. That because the nice property of of the virus definition is that it that it recognizes many variants of of the single file. So we built a system that that is creating rules. And if any one of you has Avast, this is this is what you've seen because. This manifests as, as Win32 EvoGen. This is the rules that are automatically generated on clusters of files. Remember the map, like if you've seen a spot that's like clearly cut out, we can generate a rule that just covers the whole, the whole cluster at once. But the, the point, point here is that uh, Actually, the, the, the problem is completely different. To generate the rules, you need to query, query the system many times. It's a different, different way than in the classification. So all the work that has gone into, into optimization of, of the classifier was not usable here, so we still use the GPU machines to do, to do the rules. So this is like this scaling. So, and uh, this is a piece of art to show you that, that uh, there is some art in machine learning, not, not only the hard science, and it's something that, that we created when we were designing the root system. Uh, we needed, needed to see how they interact with the rest of the ecosystem. Like, the blue ones are the new, new rules generated by, by our new system like that. And the green ones and yellow ones and, and uh, violet ones are virus definitions that have been around for, for years with us. So we use this and we found out that they perform pretty well. So we deployed the system then. OK, this is what I wanted to tell you. So now we get some time for questions. Actually, we have plenty of time for questions. Really? I was in class. Well, we definitely try. Huh? That's a little bit. 
We just had to try that. Uh, we're doing that. We, we get a cluster of machines that are running the samples one by each other and, and collecting the, the behavior logs. But there is like much more variability in, in the behavior. And there can be, there can be uh, things that are not that easy to, to overcome because a particular piece of malware just <coughs> checks if it's running in Brazil, the locale is Brazil, the IP is Brazil, and how much of it it's like that, it doesn't run, or it, it just waits for 10 minutes. And when you need to have a process that just crunches the files one by each other, you can't wait 10 minutes. So you're, you're waiting much, much less, you, you give each, each sample a bit less time than, than 10 minutes. And then you, you don't get the, the actual information. But still, we, we uh, have several several developments on that. We have a few patents on, on finding similar files with some behavior. And basically, what, what was quite successful was, was just cut the stream into engrams of, of the operation, just as regarding the payloads. Just open file, copy file, do this, and this, this was kind of producing nice, nice um, neighbors because, because we really like the, the, the tractability of the nearest neighbor approach because you get a sample, you know, I don't know anything about that, you get the neighbors and then you kind of suddenly when you're near that but those were evil and it's gone for like half a year. So, well, it's not that difficult to decide them. And on the other hand, this, this system that, that I was describing works pretty well because um, the development is this kind of, this is real, like, a real evolution. And uh, it was the, the viruses, and then they got polymorphic. That means they didn't, didn't try to uh, change the behavior, but the, 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 just the order of the instructions how do they do things and that this, these people spend years on, on creating special code generators that, that just got the same operations with completely different flows of instructions. So this is something we wanted to step over because it's a, a too, too tough arms race to, to do it. If you can go around and, and attack from a different place. Yeah, I had a, I had a, I had a similar question. Uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, recently there was some research on, uh, I don't exactly remember the, the title of the paper, but there was, there was some nice results on uh, detecting mal malware uh, just by observing uh, HTTPS traffic on the, the network and detecting malware traffic there, or codenet traffic. And uh, just, basically just based on the timings mostly. Uh, or on some basic address because they couldn't also see inside the data. So, uh, based on behaviors and timing, is actually well, you know, promising or in some sense, might be. You can definitely do this. There's this um, Cisco power company now that's looking into the traffic stream. But the problem with this is that when you get this malware communication, the host is already infected. When you are the Avast in the machine, it just mustn't happen. You have to stop the thread before it starts communicating, exchanging the, the, the bot commands. You just have to stop it before that happens. So. Right, it was just a thought that maybe you can use some of the approach to the like, file operation that we mentioned, which is a nice idea. In just the timings. Maybe. Well, kind of. It could work, but didn't try that. So my question is related to the colleagues. Do you monitor the network activity or not? Like, uh, do you use that information? Uh, in the network, network screens? Well, we do not use it at the end point. We use it in our backends in the processing. So we go collecting the, the network stream data and, and uh, trying to decide if it's something bad going on. But not at the end point. I would like to ask you about if you could speak about uh, impact to your business when you have uh, 
force like out there what force will it do uh, the action? What, what is your approach to that and what it means for the business? Well, it always depends on the scale. Like the most most costly thing is a huge false positive. If you just buy this thing, they take Facebook, it's really bad. So most of the like kind of expensive tests and things around with the virus lab try to stop this, this possibilities. Like you never want to walk Facebook, you never want to detect Chrome. So this is the most of the thing. And then we of course we try hard to, to keep the false negatives low. Like just do not let the virus slip through. And only after that you got this like low volume false positives, like if there's 20 people in the world using some program, that happens. But then we just detect it and then the loop has to come in place, like they submit the file, the analyst checks the file, says okay, it's okay. And there is a process to unlock the file again, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I forgot to, to stress this or mention this. It's really, really shifted to the, it's like 0 0.99, 998, 9993, the last time I checked this for the system. So the recall is a bit, bit, bit worse, but you have got a pretty high precision. Uh, on the ground, was tracking the good and bad uh, software or, yeah, uh, with the red yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, this one. Okay, it's okay. Uh, do you know what epic or what programs on the little green island in the red area? You mean the mixture? Uh, this part? No, 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 in the right bottom corner. Right, this one? Madagascar. Okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry. This one. <laughs> uh, sorry, I, I don't know, and uh, this is a bit. Well, I got a guess, because there is some kind of gray zone. I didn't talk about that because I didn't want to go into the details. Like, you got this, like, adware things that are they are trying to evade the detection, so they create a lot of file versions. <laughs> But still, they are not really bad. It's not ransomware that encrypting your files. They're just popping up the windows or things like that. So, usually, it like, happens that something is this close to the other, other things, and we just decide, this is the judge decision, this, this is okay. It's, like, it's not that bad. And there is a you are saying that, okay, we pop up ads for giving you a translator, so, but if, if they, they kind of use, because there is even like a, a kit, you can buy a kit, that's, that's 3D, that's, that's great, and use that kit to di distribute your software, and if that kit is it's like 3D, you end up close to malware because there are other people that use the same kit to distribute bad things, so, and actually, the other thing is that this is not that um, like fixed, like this is just t thing. so the thing sometimes just falls around. Do we have any questions? No? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>